Welcome back to another video, 2018 exam two um, for physics 206, don't panic. Uh, today we're gonna be doing questions one through four. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment um, if you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, message me on Instagram. My Instagram is in the description down below. And let's get started with question one. So question one is gonna appear right here is gonna appear right there so y'all take a picture look at it and i'm just gonna get straight into solving the problem we have this and then we have that platform and then we have a block we have a block at a and then we're trying to figure out at two a and then we have zero okay the question is asking what must K be if the block is to have velocity 2v1 to the right at x equals 2a? So we know it's moving to the right, that's v1, and to have velocity 2v1. Okay, so now let's just draw the free body diagrams of the forces that are acting on it. So it says there is friction, the coefficient of friction. So we know that's gonna be the force of friction. And we know it has a And we know that we have a, a force that points to the right because it says it, that is kx squared. So we have both of those forces and now we can get to solve the problem. Let's start by using the work energy theorem and that is work is equal to change in kinetic energy which is equal to mvf squared over two minus mv initial squared over two. So that's the main thing we're gonna use. Let's start by finding the work first. So the work has to be from distance one to distance two. So it's gonna be from A to two A, and we're gonna use the forces in the X direction because that's what's moving. So positive KX squared minus, since we know this is mu N, is the same thing as mu MG, because MG is equal to N. So it's gonna be mu MG DX. Okay, now after that, you know this is equal to mvf squared over 2 minus mv initial squared over 2. Okay, so next, after you take the integral of this is going to be, we're going to move up here, is going to be kx cubed over 3 minus mu m g x okay that means mu m g x then after that we're going to plug in 2a and a and we're going to subtract it so this is going to be k 2a cubed is going to be 8a cubed over 3 minus plug in the a a cubed over 3 minus mu m g 2 a minus a and that is the full thing and it's going to be equal to m v 1 squared over 2 because we're trying to find the velocity 2 v 1 so if you have 2 v 1 you're going to plug in the final velocity the final velocity, the initial, the, initial, the initial velocity is zero, so we're just left with MVF squared over two, and they just replaced VF with V1 squared over two. So that's what they did. And now we're just gonna simplify. That's gonna be equal to K7A cubed over three minus mu MGA is equal to MV1 squared over two. And we're trying to find k because it's asking what must k be so let's move everything to the right and divide so the answer is going to be k is equal to mv1 squared over 2 plus mu mga and then multiplied by 3 over 7a cubed 3 over 7a cubed and that should be the answer let me see hold up <sighs> okay so i figured out the problem so the problem was 
right here, MVF is the VF at 2A. And they already told us that's we're trying to find it when the velocity is 2V1. So 2V1 squared is going to be 4V1 squared. 4V1 squared. And MV initial squared, they told us it starts with initial velocity V1. So this is going to be V1 squared. So when you subtract 4V1 squared minus V1 squared, that's going to become 3MV1 squared. And that is where they get the final answer. And that's how they get the final answer. 3 over 2MV1 squared plus mu MGA 3 over 7 eighth cubed. And that's the final answer right there. And that's where I messed up in the beginning. And let's move on to number two now. Okay, moving on to question number two. Question number two is gonna pop up right here. Um, take your screenshot, read it, and we're gonna get started working it right now. So we're gonna find the velocity of the sleds after they jump. So we're gonna need the velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y, and that's gonna be the answer we're gonna be getting. So we're gonna start off, this one is momentum one, so we're gonna be writing down the momentum equation. P equals M V, okay, I don't think this marker is good. P equals MV, and let's find the P in the X direction, initial. P, X direction, initial. Okay, okay, yeah, so the next initial is gonna be M1 plus M2 plus M3, all VO, and that is the X initial, and now we're gonna write the P, the momentum of the X final, is gonna be M1, V1 cosine theta, because M1, V1 cosine theta, it goes up and to the right, so it's gonna be positive, and plus M2, V2 cosine theta. M2, V2 cosine theta, and I think they name it one and two. Yeah, they distinguish it, theta one and theta two. And then plus M3, V3, X, because that is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the V3x. So it's going to be M3, V3x, because the sled just keeps on going in whatever direction, V3x. So mass times velocity, yeah, V3x. So now we have that. Now let's do the y direction, P, Y, initial. There's nothing in the y initial. And then the P, Y, final is going to be M1, V1, sine theta 1, M1, V1, sine theta 1 minus m2 v2 sine theta 2 plus m3 v3 y and we're going to solve for v3 y now um just set the x's equal to each other set the y's equal to each other and uh, set the solution so for this one v okay so this one we're going to do m1 plus m2 plus m3 VO is equal to is equal to M1 V1 cosine theta 1 plus M2 V2 cosine theta 2 plus M3 V3 X and we're trying to solve for V3 X so move everything to the left side and divide by 1 over M3 and you'll be left with V3 X so the final answer should be 1 over m3, and then all this, m1 plus m2 plus m3, vo, minus m1, v1, cosine theta 1, minus m2, v2, cosine theta 2. And that should be the final answer for V3X, and this is for V3X. That's what it's equal to. And now for V3Y, it's just equal to zero, so we're just gonna move everything to the left and divide it by M3. So this is gonna be one over M3, M1, negative M1, negative M1, V1, sine theta one, plus m2 v2 sine theta 
two. And that should be the final answer. Let me see. <clears throat> yeah, M1, B1, Santero, one, minus, yeah, it's just reversed, but it's the same answer they got. And that is for V3Y. And to write the third equation they got, we know V is just equal to the sum of the V3X I hat plus V3Y J hat, which is Y direction. And that is the final equation you can write. And that is the answer for number two. Let's move on to number three now. Okay, starting with number three, the question is gonna appear right here. Take a screenshot, take your picture, and I'm gonna go right into solving it. Um, they said, find the potential energy function, show that these forces are conservative, and then find the kinetic energy of the object as a function of x. So let's just do a quick diagram of what they gave us. So this is plus, plus x direction, and then this is a, and then we have the block right there, and we have C1x, and then we got another one, C2x, okay? So C2x negative two, okay, C2x negative two. Okay, so now since we have those forces, um, let's start with finding the, the potential energy functions of both of them. So let's start with ux is equal to negative integral f of x dx, and just substitute negative integral of c1x dx is equal to negative c1x squared over two plus c, and that is the constant for that one. Next one, ux is equal to negative integral f x dx, which equals to negative integral c2x negative two dx, which is equal to c2 over x plus c, c2 over x plus c. So those are the two uh, potential energy functions, and this is how you prove that it is a conservative force, that you can find a potential energy function. So that's how you can prove they're conservative. Now to find the kinetic energy equation, we're gonna write the kinetic energy formula, Ke1 plus U1 is equal to Ke, and for Ke2, we're just gonna name it Ke as a function of x, plus u as a function of x. That's what we're gonna name it as. So we know Ke1, because it starts at rest, is gonna be zero, there's no velocity, so zero, so we just have u1, and u1 is going to be negative, yeah, it's gonna be u1, and we're trying to find Kex, we're trying to find this, so Ke as a function of x is gonna be equal to u1 minus u as a function of x u1 minus u as a function of x, so let's plug in, what is u1, okay. Okay, so u1 is gonna be, let's just plug it in, negative is gonna be negative c1a squared over two, and then plus, plug in the other a to this one, plus c2 over a, okay? Now we're gonna be subtracting u as a function of x, so we're gonna plug in x into here. So that's gonna be minus minus, so it's gonna be positive c1x squared over two, and we're gonna plug in x over there, and that's gonna be minus minus c2 over x, and that should be the final answer for ke as a function of x. Okay, yeah, that's the final answer, and let's move on to number four.